All right, so we were told last night that, it's, that the state of our union is strong, but for most Americans, it certainly doesn't feel strong. And if it is strong under the current tax system, why are we being asked to upset the Apple card? I want to bring in now uh, the Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. David, I mean, it's just, it was really contradictory in so many ways. Um, I guess it's tough to say, hey, you know, this economy is really crushing it with corporate taxes where they are, with these, you know, but we need to layer it up with a whole bunch of taxes and regulations to really make it hum. Yeah, I thought that was the most interesting part, is on one hand, economy is good. On the other hand, this stuff is so unfair and it's killing us. I want to point out about the corporate tax rate. You brought this up. It is a fourth tax. You know, the income is taxed at the corporate level. Then the people receive wages. It's taxed again. Then there are stock options, capital gains. That's taxed again. Then people die and they pay a state tax. Right. They're taxing the same dollar over and over. The corporate tax destroys jobs and wages. Bottom line. Bottom line. So also, of course, this uh, fair share, which is, uh, you know, listen, uh, 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 President Obama talked about it a lot. Biden talks about it a lot. In fact, this felt like a greatest hit speech. It wasn't, uh, there wasn't anything new in it for me, per se. But I've always wondered, what is fair share? We're going to show a chart now that shows the distribution of income, uh, what, what people are paying. And, you know, uh, if you just look at this, okay, you got the, the line shows you the 1% and their share of, of taxes. It just, what's fair? What, no one's ever given me a number. Well, I believe in a much flatter tax, and I think you have to do with what is politically possible. The fact of the matter is it is unfair, but it's unfair the other way. Now, no one's going to feel sorry for people in the 1%, right. and they're not going to want to see them pay a lower right. share. But the, the country needs to know the reality of what you just put up on the chart. It is unfair. It's unfair because it's too progressive. We need a flatter tax, a broader base, and we need lower taxes. Middle class should not be paying as much as they pay. The upper class should not be paying as much as they pay. Government spends too much money, Charles. Another scheme, uh, of course, is, uh, you know, the, the, the shrinkflation thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was interesting because a week ago, Wendy's sort of toyed with the idea of surge pricing, which we've seen with, uh, like, you know, uh, Lyft and Uber. And people lost their minds. They went crazy. You know, they, went, they had to retreat. They went back on, uh, to sort of say, hey, no, we were just kind of horsing around there. But interesting, this week, Jay Powell said... Um, that he was okay with surge pricing, you know, and he was he also alluded to this whole thing with shrinkflation and all these notions that corporate greed has run has run amok. Okay. It is none of Jay Powell's business how many Doritos are in a bag of chips. It is none of Joe Biden's business what uh, Uber and Lyft charge at 5 o'clock versus 6 o'clock. You know who cares? The consumer paying it. You know who cares? The producer either getting it or not getting it. Wendy shouldn't say we are horsing around. They should say they were trying economic calculation. Sometimes you get things right. Sometimes <laughs> you get things wrong. Ask the new Coke in the 1980s. Yeah. You try things that don't work. You right. move on to something different. It, the state intervening hurts it. It hurts the process of consumers and producers working together. So I thought about you last night because uh, now there's a proposal to take um, the tax buybacks. Right now it's yeah. a 1% tax, make it a 4% tax. There are typically two ways that corporations reward their shareholders through buybacks and dividends. Yeah. Uh, if, they, if they were to get through with it, if Biden was reelected and we had a 4% uh, uh, buyback tax, could that maybe bolster the payouts on dividends? Um, it would, and I want to be very clear that I don't want them to do it just because it would help my book and the way we go about doing things because it's bad policy. And this, in fairness, isn't just the left. There's guys like Marco Rubio and Josh Hawley on the right who have asked for it. Punishing companies for the way they try to return capital to shareholders is wrong. The government shouldn't put their finger on the scale here. Let each company figure it out. I believe dividends are more shareholder friendly. I think the data is overwhelmingly clear about that, but I don't need the uh, Washington, D.C. in my corner. We'll handle this, me and my clients. Thank you very much. A little bit of profit-taking today. You think this AI thing is a run, it's run its course? Well, who, who knows? Because uh, I guess it's a retail investor greed uh, running amok here, right? I mean, I say it's sort of tongue-in-cheek, but uh, momentum is tough to slow on some of these things. They're uh, perversely overpriced in a lot of cases, right. uh, but sometimes those prices kind of level out. I wrote about this at DividendCafe.com today. It could just be a flat return for a long time. It doesn't have to crash, right, right. but it could also adjust. Some of these are some very of these, expensive. Some of these stories are absolutely phenomenal, uh, although the price removed too. I got 30 seconds, but I want to share with the audience. Two stocks you like now. Owl is a name you've mentioned, Blue Owl. You've mentioned that before. 
and also Texas Instruments here. Yeah. Semis have been on a real big run. I haven't really seen Texas Instruments mentioned much in the mix. And it's been participating in the last few weeks. Over the last year it wasn't, which is when we got in. So we got it at a very low price. Uh, Texas Instruments just has a better story. They're not going to be so beholden on this CHIPS Act like Taiwan and Intel are. As far as Blue Owl, just look at Apollo and Blackstone. Blue Owl, I think, has a path to go that route. It's a fee-based business. Big dividend, big dividend growth around private credit, real estate. We love the story. Is this a spinoff? Because uh, I it was a merger of two companies okay. came together, Al Rock and 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 so they merged together, real estate and credit. All right. Hey, good stuff, man. Thanks, Always Charles. good to have you here. Someone to remind us how great capitalism is. Amen. Although we live it every day.